Cowabunga dudes! If you're an early 90s kid, you were probably just as obsessed with the Ninja Turtles like I was. The popularity seemed unstoppable for this toy line and you could find almost anything branded with these pizza loving samurais in a half shell. So it didn't take too long for companies to rip off the green mean machine or try to get a piece of the money maker that was created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. On today's Etch Retro Geek Out we're taking a look at some totally tubular knockoffs bodacious bootlegs, and more. If you like learning about vintage toys, be sure to subscribe and strap in for some toy history. The year was 1983. Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird were noodling around with some sketches of a turtle standing on his hind legs. Refining that initial sketch, they both tried to outdo each other and the concept became known as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A year later, the first comic appeared in 1984 and it was a success beyond belief. So much that it spawned an almost decade long toy line. They went from the small screen to the big screen and they even came out their shells. As they went on a musical tour. There's no toy line that screams and fully embraces the 90s like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and there's no toys apart from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that can recall so much nostalgia in one instant for me like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles can. Now before TMNT, Playmates Toys main focus was dolls and plastic playsets for toddlers but they were looking to get into the lucrative action figure market. So when TMNT's license manager, Mark Friedman, approached them, it was a perfect match. From 1988 up to 1997, Playmates produced around 400 TMNT figures, as well as dozens of vehicles and playsets. In the first four years of Turtle Mania, about $1.1 billion worth of toys were sold, making Turtles the top three selling toy figures ever at the time behind only G.I. Joe and Star Wars. And when the news came out of the sewer of these cash grabbing toys, you bet they got the molds for these and straight up started bootlegging them. Turtle Fighters is the first example. The Turtle Fighters were a line of low quality Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles bootlegs from China with incredibly poor paint jobs. The packaging imitates a real Ninja Turtles package by using a similar art style and even using the slogan, Heroes in a Half Shell. So did they ever sue them about this? <laughs> The bodies of the figures all use the same original Playmates Raphael body. Though the heads seem random, now I found these in heavy plastic as well as hollowed out bodies. The letters indicating whether they're Leonardo, Raph, Donnie or Mikey don't usually match the turtle, but wait, they did add something new into the mix and that is the etched pentagram on top of one of the turtles. And it's devilishly atrocious. Now the main giveaway for this being bootleg has got to be the paint job for sure. The teeth are painted so randomly even Picasso would frown an eye and it kind of looks creepy. And as you might have guessed, if they're a bootleg they can't be too far from Galaxy Warriors and so it's only obvious that these toys did come with some Galaxy Warriors accessories. But I guess it's not too bad to get for a buck each. Another bootleg is called the Karate Turtles Warriors. These bootlegs went a step further not only creating toys based on the original Playmates molds of the Turtles but also creating a splinter and other characters. The regular sized Turtles came with an extra clot in one release and then pumping out a cheaper version duo pack as well as a Turtles watch. The most epic thing they created were bootlegs of the giant turtles which did look a bit off and weren't as big as the real deal but one thing they did that was really cool is they also blew up the splinter sculpt they had creating the only giant splinter out there and even changing the box to karate turtles master now as chinese bootlegs were the standard by the 90s they're still today pretty much you might recall the movie stars line of teenage mutant ninja turtles that was released in 1992 to tie in with the second movie teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 the secret of the use Fast forward to 2014 when Michael Bay was about to take a stab at destroying the franchise forever. I mean, couldn't they have just done that? Couldn't they just have listened to the fans? When all of a sudden something familiar popped up. You could get six awesome TMNT movie action figures based on the 1992 molds for only 20 bucks. 
Sure, they didn't have the real feel rubber, but they did come with bright colors and fully colored weapons. A nice bootleg more than 20 years after the original release. Although the paint job could have been better quality controlled, Raf needs to see an eye doctor. And you might be interested to know that these bootlegs are still for sale on AliExpress. Now there's a lot more bootlegs out there, but for a collector, knockoffs is where it's at. Sure, a knockoff will try to quickly cash in on a trend, but often they end up creating something so bad, it's good. Like the Turley Gang, if you remember Sun Gold's Masters of the Universe knockoff toys from the last episode. With the Turley Gang, the Sun Gold's molds got a 90s revamp to cash in on the success of Ninja Turtles. It all really comes down to, let's just brighten the colors and have a couple of figures colored green, so we don't really have to do too much work. The Turley Gang came with the slogan, Fighters of Freedom, and were released by Euro, dragged into the underworld by a terrible earthquake, five inseparable friends, Primus Secundo, Spikes, Sato, and Aquarius were attacked by the merciless, atrocious hordes of Tutatis, the Lord of Darkness. The hordes threw the Turley Gang into a gigantic lava pot, causing all sorts of volcanic eruptions on planet Earth. But the five friends didn't burn up from the unimaginable heat. Instead, it turned them into steely fighters of enormous strength. The Turley Gang stirred up the lava until they were backdrafted to Earth's surface by a huge volcanic eruption. Free, rejoiced the Turtle Gang, but the friends haven't made up their mind yet. The terrible forces of the underworld have also been dragged to light by the eruption they have caused. And so, a never-ending fight of good against evil began. Now, all of these carded examples were in German, so this is a rough translation. These Turley Gang figures came out in the early 90s when TMNT was pretty much at the peak of its success. Europlay came along like many other toy manufacturers and also wanted a piece of the pizza. In order to do so, they needed something to make Sun Gold's and Suko's Master of the Universe knockoff figures become associated with the Turtles franchise. Goggles were added to the sculpts to mimic the masks of the Turtle figures by Playmates. The toys were gone just as fast as they appeared in stores and seemed to only have seen a release in Belgium, the Netherlands, and the country they were made in. Germany. The company Europlay started in early 1992 and still continues to make toys to this day. Now the company seems to focus on manufacturing outdoor garden toys. So maybe I gotta go pay him a visit and look in the old warehouse if I can find some uh, some sun gold molds. Turley Gang even had some spin-offs with Bronk their super fighter. Nobody really knows where he's coming from, this lonesome super fighter who supports the Turley Gang as a tough fighter for justice. They just figured the Machine Force Laser Force figures were suitable to be rebranded as a Turley Gang with the green color scheme they're rocking right now. So I'll just slap some green on it and let's call it Turtles. <laughs> And of course it didn't end with the Super Fighter, just like Turtles there was a lot more merchandise, like the Turley Gang branded laser gun toy, the Turley Sound Laser, and the Trouble Power Blade. And like any good toy line, they would even get their own knockoffs with Tortoise Warriors, using the same head sculpt with the goggles. Now one of the knockoffs is really the worst yet most interesting toy created, the Amicable Herculean, which roughly translates to Friendly Strong, reusing the body and head sculpts of Saturn Masters of the Abyss. These would come with a muscular figure that still had some plastic surplus, an okay paint job, and a shell you could pop around the toy. Seriously, this just looks so bad. And then we come to my favorite Heroes of the World fighters. Yes, I remember picking some of these up in a discount store in Belgium and knowing they weren't the real thing, I, I was just willing to let that slip because I need my plastic fix. I wanted to get a new turtle and I got a Heroes of the World fighter. Now, if I had ooze in my eyes, the card art would have looked okay. You got the brick background, like the real cards and some characters that were poorly drawn. This could have just been a fan drawing I had made in the 90s. Now within this China produced line, you did have four turtle figures and also some side characters, but for the side characters they took something that looks familiar. Yeah, LJN released advanced Dungeons and Dragon figures were used. Sometimes altered, but after a while they just gave up and just said, hey, this guy's Bebop, this guy's Shredder, but didn't really do any alterations to the sculpt. Now I also own some of the same molds, 
but with a different color scheme where these turtles were wearing a karategi or a yudogi. I think I remember this came as a four pack where you got all four turtles. I can't seem to find any info on these apart from a bootleg plushie that looks exactly like the action figures I owned. Now here's another well marketed toy to confuse your grandma looking for a real turtle on their way to your birthday. The Terror Toad. Not to be confused with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Terror Toad Evil Space Alien. The Terror Toad is yet another knockoff ripoff toy. They're the Teenage Mutant Ninja Frogs? Of all the Ninja Turtle ripoffs of the late 80s and early 90s, this was probably the worst. <laughs> The Terror Toad resembles the Ninja Turtle from afar by his colorful eye patch replacing the bandana and instead of a shell it has a sombrero. On the front it is outfitted in what slightly resembles samurai armor. One thing they did do right is the historically correct curved katana blade it came with and an oversized skateboard that does some pretty neat tricks. The box art shows the frog cruising through the sewer on a skateboard and its stunts. But the story doesn't end here for the fun loving frog on a skateboard. Enter the Ninja Hero Rider. If it don't sell on a skateboard, just pop it on a horse. Battery operated galloping horse with fully posable ninja. Twisting head and waist, moving arms and legs, bendable elbows, knees, wrists, ankles. Comes complete with a sword and battle star. How parents could ever confuse this for the real deal baffles me. And just like Terror Toes, there are actually a lot more better known TMNT ripoffs. Some concepts became their own thing, even though the resemblance was pretty obvious. Some mutant humanoids with 90s lingo getting into teenage shenanigans and part of a team of at least three or four brothers. Here are some of my favorite Ninja Turtle inspired toy lines and cartoons. Biker Mice from Mars fit the profile just right. Starring anthropomorphic animals, they came with the right attitude, a convoluted backstory, and they're one of the finest toys Galoob ever made. Next is Cowboys of Moo Mesa. Once again, we're back to the mutated animal trope. If TMNT could make something as boring as turtles look cool, you might as well try the same theory out with cows. But the most awesome one out there was probably Street Sharks. The formula was simple here. If mutant turtles could be a hit, the mutant versions of an even cooler animal would be a super hit. So Mattel's Street Sharks invaded our TVs and toy stores everywhere. The show was a moderate success, and even their spin-off show, Extreme Dinosaurs actually became the main stars of the cartoon after a while. But why stick with ripping off one trend when you can combine two? Stone Protectors! This one took knockoffs to new heights. They didn't just want to cash in on the popularity of Ninja Turtles, they wanted to cash in on Ninja Turtles and the troll doll craze. And then there's the game-based ones. Battletoads were perhaps the most obvious attempt at ripping off Ninja Turtles beat for beat. Um up. The Turtles had toys, so did the Toads, video games as well as a cartoon series. And then there's Cheetahman, an idea by Active Enterprises, which was solely created to have some sort of an IP that involved a group of teenage humanoid animals that could be turned into a cartoon, toys, and a comic. As part of the unlicensed Action 52 card for the NES and Sega Genesis, Cheetahman 1 was its own game and would have gotten their standalone sequel called Cheetahman 2, but that game never made it past their own warehouse as the company went under. And that's gonna be it for this week's toy history please leave a like leave a comment and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on weekly retro content you can also support the channel by joining my patreon or by shirt in the banner down below i want to thank you guys so much for watching remember to stay rad and i will see you next week toy fans bye